Business Entities Overview. Let's talk about Qualified Business Income. Qualified Business Income is net income from conducting a trade or business in the U.S. It can be from partnerships, but not publicly traded partnerships. Remember, we touched on that briefly before. S corporations, sole proprietorships, certain estates and trusts. We're not going to talk about those in this class either. Net business income is reduced by half of self-employment tax, certain self-employment health insurance deductions, and certain contributions to qualified retirement plans. So it's not just the business income. You have to reduce it by those things. A taxpayer with more than one source of QBI has to calculate each one separately, and then they will be combined on the form. So QBI is not income from W-2 wages, compensation paid by a corporation, which is W-2 income in and of itself. It's not guaranteed payments to partners. It's not payments to partners for services rendered. It's not distributions that are treated as a return of capital. It's not capital gains or losses, and it's not dividends. Now the law also says it is not income from specified service trades or business, which I'm gonna call SSTBs for, from now on, except that it sometimes is. Okay, so SSTBs are their own little animal that we need to look at. And SSTBs are listed as any trader business providing services in the fields of health, law, accounting, actuarial sciences, performing arts, consulting, athletics, financial services, and more. The idea is that it's any trader business where the principal asset is the reputation or skill of one or more of the employees or owners. So why does somebody go to a medical practice? It's because of the skill of the doctors. Why does somebody go to a law firm? It's because of the skill of the lawyers. Why does somebody go to an accounting firm? It's because of the skill of the accountants, etc. And so if the human asset is the thing behind the business, then it is probably an SSTB, as opposed to something like Costco that is selling merchandise. Qualified business income deduction if you are below the threshold, and so there is an income threshold on QBI deduction. It's generally 20% of the net QBI, and it is a from AGI deduction. QBI giving uh, arising from an SSTB may give rise to a deduction, and it's phased out at certain income levels indexed by inflation. The deduction is limited to 20% of taxable income before the QBI deduction and net capital gains. Qualified business income deduction when you are above the threshold, the deduction is the largest of 50% of wages paid, 25% of wages paid plus 2.5% of UBIA, or the QBI calculated with the income phase out. Now, few things I want to say about this. First of all, the wages paid are wages that the entity paid to its employees. If you are a sole proprietor and you don't have any employees, there are no wages paid regardless of what the owner takes out for personal use because the owner doesn't draw any wages. If you are an S corporation, any wages that you are paying out on as W-2 income, including wages paid to shareholders, as W-2 income is going to be considered wages paid. If you are a partnership, it is only W-2 wages that are paid to employees, any guaranteed payments to partners or payments to partners for services is not going to be included in this. This gives S corporations a little bit of an advantage here in terms of the wages. The second thing I want to say is that UBIA is the basis of property before we take out depreciation. So usually it's the cost basis. The last thing I wanna say is that if you are between the floor and the ceiling, in other words, if you are in the phase out threshold, then you also have to calculate your QBI with that phase out. And you're gonna take the largest of the three. Now this is a complex calculation. I am not going to go through examples of this in this video. The form does a pretty good job of walking through the computations, in my opinion, and the book also covers it in some detail. Taxpayers that do not exceed the threshold use Form 8995 
taxpayers that do exceed that threshold, even if they're somewhere in the, the face out range, are going to use form 8995A. So let's just take a very quick look at these forms. And as of this video, the most recent forms available are for 2021, but the forms are not going to change significantly from one year to the next, except possibly with the phase out amounts. So this is form 8995. This is if your taxable income is below the threshold and it tells you on here for 2021, use this form if your taxable income before your QBI deduction is at or below $164,900, $164,925 if married filing separately, or $329,800 if married filing jointly, and you aren't a patron of an agricultural or horticultural cooperative. We're of course not going to cover those last two items in this class. And it's a fairly short form. You put down your different businesses and your qualified business income or loss. And this is the net QBI that we talked about. So it's your business income reduced by some various items. And then you just follow the instructions carefully on this form and you will come down to a QBI deduction. Form 8995A is the longer form. And it says in the note, use this form if your taxable income before your qualified business income deduction is above 164,900, 164,925 if married filing separately, 329,800 if married filing jointly, or you're a patron of an agricultural or horticultural co cooperative. So we are pretty clear about which form you have to use. This one again goes through the process of aggregating your information. It has you check it off if you are an SSTB and then it has you calculate this separately for each business. It takes you through a little bit more complex calculation in here. On line 12 it prompts you to enter the amount from line 26 and this is the phased in reduction. So that is going to be part two, the phased in reduction. You'd have to go through and work through this process for your businesses. And then you come back up, you add that amount from part two onto line 12. You continue with this form. You get down to a total qualified business income component on line 16. And notice again, this is aggregated. And then you're going to bring that amount down to part four. And you're going to continue filling out this form and you're going to get to a total qualified business income deduction on line 39. A much longer form. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint and I'm gonna work through a series of examples. We have Angela, Bob, Cheryl, Dylan, and Elizabeth. And get these out, they're in your PowerPoint slides and have them handy and let's switch over to Excel. Okay, so let's take a look at this for our taxpayers. I'm going to use a 2022 tax year to walk through these examples. If you're trying to figure this out for 2021 or 2023 or 2024, it's going to be the same thing except for those items that are indexed for inflation. But let's just look at this. We're going to start out talking about Angela. And we want to look at what her AGI is. So we said in the problem that AGI is $150,000. And she's going to have a standard deduction during the year of $12,950 because she is a single taxpayer. And we want to figure out what her QBI deduction is on this and instead of having you figure out QBI and going through that calculation, I just gave you the net amount of QBI. So she has a $40,000 net QBI. We're going to take that $40,000 and we're going to take it times 20%. And then that is going to generate taxable income of the sum of these $129,050. Let's move on to Bob. Bob is a little bit more complicated than Angela. So Bob has $150,000 of AGI in 2022. 
He is also single and does not itemize, so he's going to have the same $12,950. And all of this happens to be QBI, net QBI. So we need to calculate his QBI, and if we start out by taking this based on his income, we would take that $150,000 times the 0.2 or the 20%, and he'd have a $30,000 QBI deduction. The problem is that his taxable income isn't going to be that high. And so we want to look at what his taxable income is going to be before QBI. Let's just put that down here. And it is the $150,000 less the standard deduction. So he has taxable income before the QBI of $137,050. And now we need to figure out what our QBI is based on our taxable income before QBI. I'm going to take this amount times the 0.2, and that would give us a $27,410 deduction. I'm going to take the lower of the two amounts, and so he can take the 27,410. It is limited to 20% of taxable income before QBI. And so his taxable income is $109,640. Okay, not too bad. Let's move on to Cheryl. Cheryl also has $150,000 of AGI. She's also single and does not itemize. She also has a self-employment amount, but we're going to figure out what her QBI is in this case. So her self-employment income in this case is $100,000, and it tells us that she paid $14,130 of self-employment tax, and so we're going to reduce the self-employment income by half of that. It also tells us that she paid qualified self-employment health insurance of $6,000. Now, why do we get to deduct $6,000? Well, a corporation would deduct $6,000. So we're not going to give somebody a benefit on all of their income if they would otherwise have a business deduction. And of course, this health insurance is also deductible on Schedule 1, as is half of CETA. Let's just take a look at that schedule for just a moment. I do not have a 2022 Schedule 20, schedule 1 because they are not out yet. We want to scroll down here and we want to go to Part 2. And these are adjustments to income. In other words, they are things that can be deducted from AGI. And you can see that we have three lines here. We have the deductible part of self-employment tax. We have the self-employed SEP, Simple and Qualified Plans. And we have the self-employed health insurance deduction. Those are the items that are deducted from our self-employment income to get to QBI. Okay, back to the spreadsheet. We are going to then figure out what her QBI is by just taking that $100,000 and subtracting out these amounts. And she has 86,935 of QBI. So the QBI based on her total QBI is going to be the 86,935 times 20% gives us a tentative deduction of 17,387. Let's just go ahead and figure out what her taxable income before QBI is and then what her QBI would be based on her taxable income. And you can see that she has not bumped up against the income cap in this case. We're going to take the lower of the two amounts. We're going to take the 17,387 and her taxable income is 119.663. Moving on to Dylan. Dylan also has $150,000 of AGI. His self-employment income is also $100,000. The total SE tax he pays on that is $14,130. So we're going to have to deduct the $14,130 times 50% or divided by 2. The re he also has uh, the remaining $50,000 of income he has is from capital gains. And so we need to add that in up here. We're going to use that up here to figure his taxable income before QBI and capital gains. So we're going to change the title over here as well. That income limitation 
is limited to taxable income before QBI and capital gain. So we're adding one more piece to this puzzle. He also pays $6,000 of health insurance, but in addition to that, he has a SEP plan, which is a qualified retirement plan. And so his QBI is 82,935. His QBI based on that income is 16,587. I missed that he has $45,000 in itemized deductions. His taxable income before QBI and capital gain is going to be that 150,000 minus the itemized deductions and also minus those capital gains. Make sure that if you're doing this, you get your signs right. I tend to make deductions a negative amount on my spreadsheet and then I have to add them to income. But the capital gains are a type of income, so I left that as a positive and I have to subtract it. Just make sure you get your signs right that it makes sense to you. His taxable income before QBI and capital gain is $55,000. And when we calculate the cap on that, it's limited to 20% of that amount or $11,000. We're gonna take the smaller of the two, which is the $11,000. And his taxable income becomes $94,000. Continuing on to the next page of examples, let's go to Elizabeth. So the problem says that Elizabeth has $174,349 of Schedule C income. Her CETA tax was $16,698. We're going to take half of that. That's $83,49. She has health insurance of $6,000. She has a SEP contribution of $4,000. So her QBI is $156,000. Her AGI is $180,000. She doesn't itemize, so she's going to have standard deduction of $12,950. And the problem also tells us that this is an SSTB. We're going to have to look at the phase out here. And so the phase out floor for a single filer is 170,050. Now that's another one of those numbers that is indexed for inflation and this is for 2022. Let's just show you that some of these numbers are 2022 specific. I don't want you to get them mixed up if you're looking at this in another tax year. So these are 2022 specific numbers and this is also a 2022 specific number. So what is this phase out range? Well, we need to look at the phase out and see if her taxable income before QBI and capital gain is higher than that amount. And when we look at this, it is 167,050. That is the 180,000 less the 12,950. That is below the phase out floor. So it doesn't matter that she is an SSTB. She is still going to be able to take her QBI deduction. So the QBI based on the total amount is going to be that 156,000 times the 20%. We're going to take it based on the taxable income before QBI and capital gain which is the 167,050 times 20%. We're going to take the lower of the two, which is the $31,200, and her taxable income will end up being 135,850. Okay, let's look at Elizabeth II here. We're going to have the exact same facts as we had in the first one. So we still have the 174, actually I can just copy this over, right? We're going to have the 174, 349, the CETA, the health insurance, the SEP, and that's going to give us a QBI of 156. We're going to have a AGI of $380,000. The phase out floor is still 170,050, but now we also have a phase out range. The phase out range for a single filer is $50,000. So we have a cap of 220,050. If she is an SSTB and exceeds that cap, she can't take the QBI deduction at all. Her standard deduction is still $12,950. So her taxable income before QBI and capital gain is $367,050. When I compare this number to this number, I can see that she is above the ceiling for this phase out she cannot take any QBI at all, and therefore her taxable income 
is $367,050. And this looks like a good place to stop. If you have questions, get in touch. I'll see you next time.